on Thanksgiving. I did too much on Thanksgiving. And by the time I sat down to eat, I really didn't want to eat anything. I hadn't eaten in the day, but I was just exhausted. And that was the end of that. But, you know, everybody else seemed to enjoy the food. And so it's all good. Um, and then the next day was, was nice. It was just relaxing and I got a lot of work done. Uh, it's nice to not have something specific. Um, I can focus when I don't have meetings or classes and I hope that that was true of all of you. Um, let's talk about this week and let's talk about um, what we're gonna do today. I want to talk about your final reflective essay. Um, it's in the module and I wanna go over it with you briefly. You'll have to read it to the prompt yourself. Um, but uh, I've been talking about it all semester long. We're gonna do this thing, we're gonna do this thing. And now you can see what the thing is. I wanna confirm the title for the book and I wanna discuss the book module. Most of the things in that module are things you already done. And so it's just a matter of putting everything in the same spot so I can pull it into the book. Um, so on Wednesday, there are no synchronous classes. I mentioned the fact that I work better if I focus, if I can just stay on one task and not have to interrupt myself to go to class. In fact, if we went to class, I would just say the same things over and over again, or I'd put you in your groups and you'd say the same things in your groups over and over again. And so it really does seem like the best use of our time is for you actually to focus on your writing and to get feedback if you want. You can make appointments to see me on, on Wednesday, um, all the way from 12 until two, I'll be available in 15 minute increments. I'm actually working from 11 on, but I wanna all day today, those appointments are reserved for my 11 o'clock class, just as the one o'clock appointments are reserved for this class. Sometime tomorrow afternoon, I'll um, take off the placeholders for the class. And um, so if 11 o'clock works better for you, you can. Um, go ahead and fill in your name. Um, Alyssa, how's availability right now for you? I have a lot of availability, um, especially on Wednesday. I don't have any other classes so um, or work. So you guys are more than welcome to email me or uh, message me through Canvas. Um, and as well, Thursday, Friday, or anytime next week too. Just let me know and we can um, try to fit to your guys' schedule. And I wanna emphasize that uh, Alyssa gives really, really good suggestions. I met with Litzy earlier today and she um, said, hey, Alyssa suggested this thing. And I go, oh my gosh, that is an amazing idea. And um, I know that was true with the personal narratives too, that some of you said, oh, Alyssa said, do this. And I was saying the same thing when I could see her comments or if you told me. So meeting with me or meeting with Alyssa, either one of those is great. Um, you do get extra credit if you meet with Alyssa and you do not get extra credit when you meet with me, um, but you do have to complete the reflection and um, that's good too. The other thing you can do is once Alyssa's schedule fills up, you can make appointments at the writing center. And um, yeah, that's gonna be really valuable because Alyssa will fill up and uh, yeah. The other thing you can do is you can ask your group questions about the feedback that they gave you. And that may also be helpful for you. Your paper is due on December 5th. Uh, I will accept it through December 12th without any kind of penalty. Why? Because I want you to get your paper to the point where you like it. Um, for some of you, you'll go, oh, I will never like my paper. But I know for myself, if, if something was due on the fifth, I would wish that I had two more days. And so 
I'm giving you two more days. I'm giving you a few more days than that. Um, but yeah, right. Get feedback, revise, think about your audience, think about how you're gonna connect to your audience. Think about what you wanna say, make sure that you are on track and that somebody can follow your ideas. The rubric is available on Canvas. Um, it has its own page, I believe. Gosh, I don't remember which page it's on. I'll find that and I'll include that in a, an announcement. Incidentally, there is a reflection that goes with this essay. I always include those. And it's due at the same time as your essay-ish. So if you turn in your essay late, like on December 12th, you didn't have to turn in the reflection on December 5th. You'll turn them in about the same time. Now, I'm working on the book right now. And to be honest, I don't remember the title that we chose. We had a lot of really good titles. Do any of you remember what the title was? Somebody? I don't remember it being solidified. I remember everyone voted, but let's see. Well, then let's. I think it was um, the number five, but I'm not sure. A few people are putting things in the chat. Something Aztecs. Um, this is us, a journey of Aztec minds. Okay. Is everybody still happy with that? Okay, excellent. Let me, um, it was the beginning of the semester. It was stressful. Okay. I'm gonna, highlight that and then I will not forget. That did not work. That highlighted everything. All right, Aztec Minds. Let me just do this. All right, I can't. Apparently, I don't know how to use Google Docs. I'm writing it down and I will All good, okay. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna take you to our, um, our module. By the way, I did put where the reflections are right there. This is week 15 and we're basically wrapping up the essay. And which means we're not doing a lot. Um, these are our tasks for this week. You're going to attend the synchronous meeting. You're here, so you're doing that. Um, you're gonna read the prompt for the final essay and ask me questions about anything that you don't know and uh, make an appointment to meet with me or with a tutor or with Alyssa to get feedback and then start working on um, reading and give fee giving feedback. I'll talk to you about the book module in just a minute. Submit your essay and reflection. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, let's talk about that essay that's coming up. And this is due, this is our final. Um, to make that a little bit more clear. I like to put the different parts of the prompt up at the top so you can go to them. Let's say you just want a printable prompt or a printable rubric, they would be there. I've got questions that you might have asked about this and then hints for streamlining your discussion. But here's the project very basically. 
And this is a, a surprise because I've been talking about this from the beginning. Every time I would give you a rhetorical analysis, I would say, you're going to be writing an essay that might include some of these analyses in it, and it's gonna be the last essay of the semester. This is it. So here's what I wrote. Over the course of the semester, we've talked a lot about raising our voices, how all of us have something to say about saying, uh, have something to say about saying something that matters, even if we feel like our voices don't count and that the world would prefer that we be quiet. We've also talked about raising our voices in a way that engages specific audiences. Even as we've been talking about how to write what we are writing, we've analyzed what other writers are doing. And you've examined persuasive articles for a variety of audiences, academic audiences, academic audiences of scholars, academic audiences of students, and then all those personal essays that we read. And along the way, we've looked at rhetorical strategies that the authors use. We've looked about how the authors construct ethos. They build trust between them and their audiences, uh, how they evoke emotions, how they demonstrate logic and how they achieve their goals. They have a purpose, which might be to provoke some kind of thought. It might be to transform the way readers view the world. It might be to challenge readers to do something, to actually act on what they've read. And you've read and you've analyzed, you've written analyses. And I want you to think about you know, like what did you learn and how can you take this beyond the classroom? And so this, along those lines, this is your project. You're gonna create a reflective essay by identifying, describing, and analyzing persuasiveness of specific things that other writers have written, and then reflecting on how you've employed those strategies in your own writing this semester, and how you've grown as a writer, writer by studying these things. And in completing this essay, you're going to address the following topics. Now, you'll see this is the introduction and here are some body paragraphs and there's a conclusion. And you could follow this basic format and that's your outline, but there are other ways to organize this and you don't have to do that. But let me talk about what goes in your paper an introduction. You're going to introduce what rhetoric is, what argumentation is, and the value of learning the art of persuasion. Um, if you want, you can reference you know, E. Shelley Reed or Rebecca Jones or some of the other articles that we've written about or we've read about how to write. And in doing this, I want you to reflect on your own growth as a writer over the course of the semester and how you're learning to consider these rhetorical ideals in your own writing. You'll need a project statement and you'll need a thesis to guide your readers and let them know the direction of your essay. That's your introduction. I do want you to have a paragraph on the importance of appealing to a specific audience. We know that that's true, but sometimes we don't think about it. And so, you know, like think about the difference between Teresa Tony and E. Shelley Reed or Rebecca Jones. Both are, all these articles are academic, but they're so very, very different because they have different audiences. So you're gonna create a paragraph analyzing how authors adapt to audiences and purposes by using examples from our reading. How does a change of audience change the way an author addresses that audience? And you'll use some textual examples to illustrate your discussion. I also want you to have a, success, a, sesh, a section, I can talk, a section on ethos. 
you're going to define it and analyze why it's important. I also want you to demonstrate how a writer, one of the writers we've read, builds ethos in their paper um, by referencing at least three of the five things that Aristotle claims build ethos. In my experience, students focus on the knowledgeability piece, which definitely matters. We're more likely to trust people who are knowledgeable, but just being knowledgeable doesn't mean you'll necessarily trust somebody. So there are other types of things. By the way, if you don't remember what those are, you can go all the way down here because I listed them for you. Um, so you're gonna analyze how an author builds ethos. And then I want you to analyze how you built ethos in one of the essays you wrote. Um, it could be an essay for this class or it could be an essay for another class. Either way, you're fine. But of course you need to be very specific I also want you to have a section on pathos. Again, you're defining it, describing why it is powerful um, and why some authors might choose to minimize it. Again, you're gonna choose an article we've read and analyze how an author uses a rhetorical strategy in order to evoke emotions. You'll note that pathos and the strategy are not the same thing. An author uses a, a narrative to evoke emotions, or an art author cites specific examples to evoke emotions, or uses loaded language to evoke emotions. And so you've got to identify the strategy and analyze what emotions it evokes and why. Um, so you're going to do that for an author that you've read and then a rhetorical strategy that you used and how and why it evoked emotions in your specific audience. Same thing for logos. What is it? How does it work? Why does it matter? What's a rhetorical strategy that one of our, uh, our readings used um, that built that sense that it's logical and then a conclusion. Questions about what goes in this essay. I want to give you a few hints for streamlining your discussion. You might have noticed that it's there's a lot of cite what an article does, cite what an you know, like what's a rhetorical strategy. So you could um Hypothetically, um, hypothetically, you could analyze one outside text instead of multiple outside texts. For you might use only what I found in Standing Rock, um, in because uh, Koenig has lots of rhetorical strategies. He definitely builds ethos for a specific audience. He definitely demonstrates logic, he evokes emotions, he builds ethos, he does all of those things. So that would save you some space in your essay. Um, similarly, you could analyze one essay you have written instead of multiple essays. That way you only need to introduce one of the essays that you've written. You also, and this one's a little trickier, but it could be done, you could analyze a single rhetorical strategy that illustrates the use of ethos, pathos, and logos. And yes, the rhetorical strategy can employ all three appeals simultaneously. Um, yeah, like a narrative or the role of exigency. I, I've created a pretty straightforward organizational pattern, but there are other ways to organize this essay. And you may see those as more logical depending on how you're writing this essay. And so keep your audience in mind. You need to keep them with you. You need to guide them, um, that kind of thing. Erica asked how long this essay should be. And it really depends on how you organize it. If you are introducing 
three different outside texts, that's going to be a longer essay. Um, in fact, I answer this question down here. Here's what I wrote, Erica, and this is going to sound like a totally lame answer, but I said, honestly, I have no idea how long this will be. Um, a lot depends on how you organize the essay and how many different articles you analyze. I can't imagine this would be over four pages, um, but it could be a little less than that. Um, things that I I want to emphasize, I didn't create a minimum word count, but that doesn't mean that you can get away with doing a one and a half page essay, quite honestly. Um, what I can say is that you should be thorough and in depth in your analysis. Analysis, rhetorical analysis, requires that you answer a lot of how and why sorts of questions. Um, in a variety of ways, like how might the primary audience respond? Why? What does this make the primary audience think or remember? How does this tap into their pre-existing beliefs? How does this make the audience more likely to see? You see, it's how, why, how, why. Some of you are were starting to get to answer those how, why questions in your rhetorical analyses. And um, some of you have some more practice to do with this. And the last week and a half of the semester, that's what you'll be doing. Again, you'll be able to take advantage of meeting with Alyssa or going to the writing center or meeting with me during my office hours to make sure that you're getting to that point. So that kind of how, why analysis with quotes and paraphrase and um, context, that takes space. That's why I don't think there's a way you could do this essay adequately in a page and a half. But that being said, I think it could be done in three pages. Three pages is approximately 750 words if you double space. I haven't counted that out, but I did read that on the internet. So. Um, does that, anybody have a question related to length? I actually put a lot of, I tried to anticipate the kinds of questions that you might ask and put those on this page. Um, important, when's it due? How many points is it worth? It's worth 100 points. And it's due on December 9. Um, can you use first person? Yeah, definitely. It would be hard to write about what you wrote or about your writing or about your growth as a writer if you didn't use first person. Um, however, first person plural would not be as appropriate and um, neither would second person for this type of essay. Who's your audience? Um, that's a tricky question. And I thought about this a lot and I thought, you know, like, are you writing to yourself? It's reflective. Are you writing to me? I'm going to grade it, your analysis. Um, are you writing to another student to help them learn these things? I, you know, like, I don't know, you could be writing to any of those audiences. And so kind of what I suggest that you do is imagine the audience the way that it's easiest for you to write this essay. The in-depth analysis is not an option, but that kind of in-depth analysis can be useful for you. It definitely is required for me, and it could be helpful for another student also. So, you know, like, imagine an audience and write for that audience. You know, like, really picture them in your head. Um, what kind of tone you should you adopt? Well, that probably depends on the audience you choose. I have a feeling some people prefer to use an academic tone. If, if you are that person, use an academic tone. If you want a conversational tone, I'm fine with that also. What works for you? I'm not grading it on your tone. I am grading the depth of your analysis. Um, I'm grading, are you showing and not just telling me things? 
Are you guiding me? You know, like sort of like the pink house. Are you assuming that I can read your mind? Those kinds of E. Shelley read, read sort of things. Um, some of you might be asking, can I use some of the analyses I wrote previously? And yeah, you can. You probably have to add some things, um, expand your analysis. Um, that's quite possible. Um, but I, I designed this course that you really could pull from the analysis that you've already done. Um, and even you've done some rhetorical analysis on your own essay when you submitted the um, personal narrative. And so you, know, you could use that rhetorical analysis in your essay if you wanted. Again, you would probably have to expand. I think on some of your papers, I said, if you ever use this in an essay, you would need more. Um, you're gonna do the same kind of work on your next essay. So anything you've already written, I've given you feedback on. And so you have a pretty good idea about how you might need to expand it. So that could be useful. Do you need a works cited page? Yes. You're gonna be referencing outside sources and I'd like you to create works cited entries for those. You do not need to create a citation for your own essay. Those are the questions I thought of um, as I was writing this. Um, can you think of other questions that um, I should answer about this essay? And Alyssa, you can ask those questions too. You analyze a lot of prompts when you work in the writing center. So and you'll be working with students on this essay. So if there's anything that you can think of that I should answer, um, definitely let me know. Questions? Um, will we be put into uh, groups for this? I wasn't planning on putting you into groups with this, um, but if in your existing groups, uh, you want to give each other feedback, um, that would totally be fine. I have learned, you know, like as a writer um, who also teaches writing, I have realized that my writing gets better if I have other people read it. And sometimes I have time for that and sometimes I don't. But um, Alyssa, I imagine that's true of you too. When you wrote your book, uh, you had a lot of people feeding and feeding, you know, like giving you feedback, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I had like copy editors, marketing editors. Yeah. It's always helpful for sure. So you know, like if you are comfortable with your group and your group agrees to do that, I, I would encourage you to get feedback from your groups. Um, I, I know as I read the reflections, I do read how grateful you are for your groups and um, the ideas that you've gotten from them. Also, as I look at your documents, I can see the feedback and it's good feedback. So, um, you know, like there are just different layers of feedback. I give um, feedback about grading. Alyssa gives feedback about writing from her areas of expertise. Then all of you, you give feedback based on your expertise, which is considerable. Um, you've all been in school for a long time, you're good readers. And so, you know, it's just different, different perspectives. So any other questions? I was going to ask if you think that in the introduction, um, they should all be including um, a statement that outlines everything else that they're going to be talking about throughout the rest of the essay. Yes, in fact, that's what I meant by a project statement is like in this essay, I'm going to examine you know, like how authors use ethos, pathos, and logos in an article titled Hip Hop Planet or how McBride uses this in Hip Hop Planet. And I'm going to analyze how I've attempted to use ethos, pathos, and logos in my research essay or in a personal um, 
essay that I wrote at the beginning of the semester. Um, and then a thesis that says something, yeah. That's what I mean by a project statement. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Now there's one more thing I wanna talk about before I send you on your way. And I won't, you know, like some of you, I'll be seeing you in meetings. In fact, there's my office hours and you can see several students have already made appointments. You can see those. If this all fills up, I may add some additional hours on, or additional time on Thursday. I just wanted to make sure all of this filled up first. So back to where I was. So here is a module that's still getting put together. And this is our book. And um, I'd like for you to, I need to, I need to add a submission link here. I hadn't done that, but I will. So you already wrote your bio, but I want it all in one place, all your bios in one place. And so if you want to copy paste the bio you've already written into this submission link, which will be a submission link in about 10 minutes, you can do that. If you want to rewrite it, here's a model from my previous class. And you'll note she has her name, um, her gender pronouns in parentheses after her name, her standing at SDSU, she's a first year. Um, where she's from, what her major is, a short sentence about outside interests, and a short sentence about why she wrote the essay, what inspired her to write the essay. And I think this is a really good pattern. You'll see hers is concise. It's three lines. Yours might end up being five, but it's not a super, super long paragraph. Questions about that, by the way, you get points for that. I will also be adding um, a form that you're going to fill out. And the form is a permission. It's a copy. It's a, a publishing permission to use your essay. I have to get permission from you to do that. And it needs to be in writing. So that's exciting. That will be there. Um, you should fill this form out whether you want to be published or you don't. And you get five points no matter what. Yay. The other two things in here, and there'll be a couple more things added to this book module, um, but these are extra credit. As I began picturing this book in my mind, you are writing to other first year students. And I want um, your audience to get a good snapshot of who you are, um, of how you navigated fall 2020, about how you survived. And along those lines, I'd like to include little pieces of advice or commentary, um, you know, like it's a chance to reflect on the experience of being in college, of working on a draft with a group, of working online. You might have advice for people to help them um, with online classes, um, advice for working in a peer reading group, um, advice for trying to get to know classmates. Um, you can discuss aha moments where you go, oh, that's what ethos is. Or, oh, I see how writing and identity are connected. Or here's why it was useful to go visit the instructor or why it's useful to visit uh, a fellow or a writing tutor. Why? Because first year students struggle with those things. Um, you know what it's like to come into a university that is fully online. Um, so, so imagine your audience and what do they need to know? 
we're talking short little blurbs here. Um, I don't know how many words, but short. And we'll include some of these to include in the book. You can complete the discussion board twice, extra credit writing number one and extra credit writing number two. I put it on the discussion board format, not because you have to respond to anybody, but I think um, if you see that somebody wrote something that you think would be super useful, uh, say something encouraging to that person or go, yeah, this should definitely be in a book for first year students. Um, I think that that could be, I think that that could be really valuable. Um, questions about any of this? Questions about anything? All right, then I look forward to meeting some of you on Wednesday during my office hours and um, talking with you about your paper. Honestly, I look forward to reading your papers and um, seeing you know, like how you're raising your voices about what America is or what it should be or what it can be in the future or how it can be that. Um, make sure that you are building that into your essay, that this is about what America is um, or what it should be or what it isn't or um, what you dream of it being. Don't let that part get lost from your essay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you. And um, I encourage you to sign up for an appointment with me or with Alyssa as quickly as possible because I have a feeling everything's gonna fill out pretty quickly. Um, the Writing Center's been busy. There's lots of availability tomorrow, um, but we've reached that point in the semester that you'll probably need to um, make an appointment you know, like a day or two in advance. So I'm gonna dismiss you and I'll stick around for a while longer, as long as you're here and answer questions. Have a great week. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Oh, sorry, this is a little late, but uh, I can't remember if you talk about, but you talk about when you're like analyzing